Hi, Craig. Hi, Craig. Hi, Craig. Hola, Craig. Hey, Craig. Hello, and welcome back to the paddock. Today we have Ito, Chelsea, Melissa, and Amy. And behind the scenes are myself, Hannah, and Leanne. We would normally be silent and producing in the background, but today's episode is a little extra fun, so we couldn't not join in. Why is it fun? Well, today we're going to be creating our dream F1 teams seasons, and we're going to pass it on over to talk about our dream teams with Ido. Thanks, Hannah. Well, while history buff me could go into like historic dream teams, for this one, I decided to do current drivers. So my dream team would be Max and Charles with Alex as a reserve. Putting Max first, just based on pure skill and driving style, and then putting Charles second, while honestly, they're they're both excellent drivers, as we can see, but I just think that Charles's style is a bit less aggressive and out there, and that's why I would put Max first. And then in terms of car, I would say go for the 1992 Williams because while for example the 2002 Ferrari was an excellent car as well I think the Williams just sentimental value is better because Mansell won his first and only championship in that car and 1992 marked the start of Williams dominance Whereas 2002 for Ferrari, they were in the middle of their dominance. So it was kind of easier to produce a winning car than when they were starting from scratch. All right. And I have a slightly different approach to Ito. I still have Max on my team because I do like Max. He is a very talented driver. You got to give it to the man. But I am going to give everybody what they really want is Max and Daniel back together again. We've got to get the gang back together again. Those two are just really good together. I think Danny is in such a better headspace now that I think being paired with Max would only push both of them to get as much as possible out of the car. Um, And I think Max just really needs a teammate that he really and truly gets along with. And everybody knows that that is hands down Danny Rick. There's no question about it. In terms of a car, I'm going to have to stick with this year's RB19. That thing is a damn rocket, and it's just too perfect. But I would bring back the RB10, RB11, basically 2014, 2015 livery. That's just one of my favorites. Super punchy, lots of bright colors. But other than that, the RB19 is just too damn good to pass up. Now, for my team in particular, I might be following suit with some of the drivers here mentioned before, but I would build mine with Charles and Lewis. Both of them, they're both incredible drivers, know what they're doing. Charles is known to be pushing that car way past the limits that should be performing, especially this season. And Lewis, well, we all know he's the GOAT. No other reason than that. No, I'm just kidding. He's a great driver as well, too. He knows what he's doing. So I feel like the both of them together will bring a really cool dynamic to the team. Also, lastly, Lewis can give Charles some fashion tips for the paddock and hopefully get rid of those um, famous quality red pants because I think Boy needs it and I think Lewis would be the perfect match for that. As for Carr, I would go with the W11 from the 2020 season. Mercedes knew what they were cooking. Hopefully they're cooking that again this year for the upcoming upgrades. We'll just have to see in the next coming weeks, but it would be just amazing simply to just see them drive together and kill it. So that's who I would have. So I re- I'm going to sound so dumb because I've talked about my obsession with these drivers already in every episode, but I'm going full Latino mode, you know, as Carlos would say, and I'm making my Spanish driver dream team. We're going to get Carlos Sainz, we're going to get Fernando Alonso, and we're going in with experience. So I am sorry for any rookies that wanted to join my team. If I can get them in the right car, 
I have a driver that I know will get podium because like we know Alonzo is like third place consistency right now at Aston and Carlos is always going to get me points. He is a solid almost high like midfield driver so I'm staying. I'm, I'm gonna be there. And a little of a preview but Carlos keeps getting better with every year like I have proof of this in the future highlight I'm working on and he is a consistent driver that every year just gets like one or two more points so I'm banking on that. Also, we have Alonzo showing this year that he's a little bit of a teacher kind of dude with Lance. And I feel like he could do that with Carlos. Like, I have high hopes even after Australia because they're besties again. It's fine. Checko checked. And I just feel like they would be the type of drivers that understand their friendship on and off the field. Or not field, circuit. However, I was thinking about it because I was reading the other girls, um, like, cars i don't really know anything about cars i feel like my duo wouldn't be able to join any of the teams on the circuit right now so we just have to get a whole new investment and just put another team out there specifically for these drivers porsche i know it didn't work out but maybe we can work something out i don't know maybe they can be the new audi lineup in 2026 who knows before moving into the next stop of our dream teams it's time for the moderators to join in my dream drivers would honestly be Charles and Danny together. I've always enjoyed seeing them interact off track and you never really see any interaction, like really any race talk towards them, but like imagine them together in like the C squared type of videos. It'd be freaking hilarious. So I kind of just, my dream world would enjoy having that. And for my reserve driver, no one knows this one yet because I left it blank because I didn't want people to read ahead. But I think I would love to see Arthur Leclerc as his brother's reserve driver. I think that'd be the cutest thing in the world. And my little maternal heart and family loving person would just love to see that. Ooh, I would probably most definitely pick Lando and Charles to be together. Those would be my dream team drivers. They are definitely a different but good vibe and I think they could complement each other very nicely. If I could pick a reserve driver though it would definitely be Danny because he just brings a great vibe, warms up a room, and would be amazing for PR events as you have seen in the past. So who wouldn't want them together? I did realize that I did not include my reserve driver in my dream team. My reserve driver is a little different. It's not somebody currently on the grid. Oh, Leanne did mention Arthur, which is somebody who's not on the grid. I would love to bring Bianca Bustamante from F1 Academy in as my reserve driver with Danny and Max because I feel like Danny would go protective older brother, take her under his wing, teach her every single solitary thing that that man knows, which we know is a ton because he's been around. And I just feel like that would be such a fun reserve driver to have. And I think it would be a great opportunity to see a woman from F1 an Academy as a reserve. I mean, now that we talked about our driver lineup, let's talk principal. In terms of principal, you know me, I have to go historic. I have to go back to Ferrari's heyday of Jean Todd's who was the principal from 1994 to 2007. So throughout Shumi domination, Ferrari domination, what have you. And honestly, he was the one that made a whole generation, me included, believe in Ferrari. Plus his wife, Michelle Yeoh, she's a badass actress and who doesn't like a badass woman behind a man? Love that, Ido. You are speaking facts right now with that team buildup. Now, for me, I'm going with current principles, and I was on the fence between two, and this may be controversial for some people, depending on which teams they root for in particular. Who were my two? Toto Wolf and Christian Horner. Total Wolf, you know, he's been carrying the team of Mercedes-Benz since like 2013, successfully led them to eight constructor championships. And seven, depending on who you're asking, eight World Driver Championships with Lewis. So obviously, Toto knows what he's doing. He knows how to bring the A game and build a team up. Very great. But then, of course, 
who wouldn't want to see him and his lovely wife, Susie Wolf? I would love to be really close friends with her. And I think that would be, you know, a little extra plus added in. Now with Christian, he brings the same energy as Toto. He's been actually, if I'm correct, and correct me if I'm wrong, ladies, he's been the longest lasting team principal in Red Bull. And he was like one of the first one as well, too. So that just speaks to his knowledge that he knows what he's doing. And there's a reason why he's still around despite the ups and downs. And we've seen how caring he's been about Danny's return to the team as well. So, you know, that kind of dynamic would guarantee wins. Nonetheless, both of them would lead the team to greatness and we'd be winning all the time. So some people are going to judge me on this, but I want to see Sebastian Beto come back into Formula One as a team principal. So if I had a fake team, I would choose him for my team principal for my dream team. Because look, I heard this on the podcast. I, I talked about the podcast. It was a Yuki one. And they were talking about Alpha Tori's team principal retiring. And they're like, oh, wouldn't it be so funny if Sebastian came back? And I was like, no, no, that's not funny. Why can't we do that? And uh, oh, by the way, Alpha Tori is getting a new principal, just in case you didn't know. I felt like throwing that out there. But I, the thought just hasn't left my mind. And I feel like he was a top driver in his prime. He has 53 Grand Prix under his belt. He would bring some new thoughts onto the grid because he's a bit younger compared to some of the team principals that are out there now, like not including Toto and Christian. And he knows what it takes to make a team work. And honestly, he was always well known for giving advice to like teammates, other drivers. He even would do like little car checks and talk with the engineers. So he has a lot of knowledge that he can put into a team. And a lot of the other drivers and team principals would agree that Fettel would fit the position, even though they don't know if he would actually take it. Yeah, if I had to pick my team principal, well, I did pick Seb as a kind of a role. I have to go with Total Wolf for my team principal. I think he creates this really special environment with people that he works with. There's no animosity. There's still that competitive drive, but it's not internal competitiveness amongst each other. I feel like you wouldn't get a repeat of Danny and Max round one, where they started towards the end, started fighting with each other, and there got a lot of animosity. I feel like you wouldn't see that with Toto, and I'd love to see Susie in some kind of a liaison role to help out with Bia. Maybe even have Seb in a role kind of like Nikki Lauda, where he's being able to give suggestions and be useful and share all of the wealth of knowledge that is Sebastian Vettel. Oh, you've taken a little different approach to this. And uh, I decided I wanted to spice up the principal roles. So my choice is Jerry Holloway because I would like to see Ginger Spice as a principal and I want to see her battle her husband every single weekend and my five-year-old heart would be very excited to just witness Ginger kill her husband's team. Okay, Hannah, your turn. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Mine would probably, honestly, would be Susie Wolf. The simple fact that she would be a complete badass let's be honest she not only was a scottish former racing driver she now manages f1 academy and she kind of shows women empowerment and she's just honestly a great person i think she would be a good f1 team principal if not a good f1 team principal in the making so that would be honestly my pick i mean now that we talked driver lineup Team principal, let's talk calendar. And while I am a street circuit girly, hence you would probably think I would like pick Singapore because it's a street track and a night race, which I'm also super much a fan of, or at the very least Monaco. I would say no to both because while both are awesome tracks, I have a hard time separating the spectacle that is the GP at those locations from the track itself. And why I also wouldn't select tracks like Monza or Suzuka, because they just, to me, have too much baggage, if you will. And I'd rather keep it classic, which, let's keep it real, was my theme this entire episode, and would go with Spa. While, yes, it 
it itself has baggage too with the death of Antoine Hubert in 2019 at an F2 race. It is at its core an amazing track, especially because while having been updated for modern racing, it's still able to retain its charm with corners like Eau Rouge, Plachimont, and La Source. That's why I hope it stays on the calendar also past this season to which its contract is up. And I would hate to see it go, even if Stefano Domenicale has tweeted out that historic tracks are not safe, which would be a bummer. Now, for me, I am going to go on the same side of the hemisphere we're in, but a little bit down south. I really like Brazil. I'm still new to Formula One, so I'm still getting to know like all the tracks and getting familiar with them. But I do remember some historic moments in Brazil, one of them being in 2021 when Lewis started to race off in P10 and ultimately won. That is known to be one of the greatest races he's done and never get a special place in my heart, despite me being a Ferrari girly and Charles being my favorite, but George got his first win at Interlargo Sao Paulo. That was beautiful to see him win the sprint race. Of course, I was happy for K-Mag even getting P1 for that. And then George, you know, just holding his own and winning that race and getting that first Grand Prix win. It was special. It was just be lovely, lovely to see. But overall, in general, I would love to see more races in Latin America, Central and South. You know, just the vibes of Latino people in F1. I feel like they would really collaborate together really great. You know, it's just that energy that us Latinos have. And then you mix it in with the hype around F1. It would be a great time. And plus, it'll give an opportunity for these drivers to explore, like, the countries a little bit. So it's just me. Let's bring it over to... Central and South America. I completely agree with Melissa. And I was laughing because when we first made the idea for this episode, I was like, I want everything Latino. I did I did go a little off with Sebastian, but that's fine. I do want to add more Latin circuits too. I want to go more south of Latin America because right now it's been pretty known to do like north, north of South America. Sorry, tongue twister. And I want to do like maybe Peru or Chile because they're both really big tourist attraction spots already. So people would be more likely to come and then they can make it a destination trip. We can also maybe offer campground locations, which would encourage more people to come because of lower cost day. And personally, I would love to do a campground Grand Prix. That would be amazing. So right now, the GPs that have gone to South America They've only been in the north. I feel like it would be really interesting in the south. And also the cost for these trips are mostly airfare because the F1 fans, they can find the local cuisines. They can find the local things to do. It will be new. It's exciting. It's fun. And most of it is actually not high cost once you're there. And you can bring business to like the smaller mom and pop shops. Also, how fun would it be to see the drivers try the different cuisines throughout Latin America and whatever country they're in? That would make for some great content material right there, just seeing their reactions and just their overall. I would just love them, just love to see them just try something exotic and different. That, Melissa, that brought up an amazing point because last year, Red Bull actually tried it with Max and Chaco and Mexican cuisine, and Max went ham. I mean, the guy loves food, but apparently he loves Mexican food too. If I had to pick a track, I am also a big straight circuit girl. I love them. I think they're so much fun. I would love to almost create a brand new track that's almost like a mix of Monaco with Suzuka, where it's still a night race, but maybe somewhere on the East Coast in the States, like, I don't know. New Hampshire, give us something a little bit different. I feel like all our U.S. races are either in the South or they're on the West Coast. I'd love to see something a little bit different. Or if I had to bring back a track, I would love to bring back Porto and bring back the Portuguese Grand Prix. I think it would just be so much fun to get that track back. I think it's always a good race, but I know not everybody is a huge fan. 
So Leanne and I decided to double team this. Um, we both ended up agreeing on this decision. If we were to choose a dream track, both of us would love to see the gorgeous landscape of Circuit Paul Ricard back. Something about La Castellette in France is beautiful and is also known for great weather. And the best place to watch the race is the Virage du Pont, um, which is the f final two turns into the finish line. And if you haven't seen it, it's like a zigzag and it's a perfect viewpoint going into the finish line. And yeah, outside of the beautiful landscape there that I fell in love with, I also, I mean, I, I do love Coda as I see it every single time I fly in to visit my sister. But visually, I think it really would be kind of cool to see a race in like Montana or something just in the rural outskirts of just Montana, Wyoming, any of those, but construction of it would literally piss me off that they had to do that. So that would, I wouldn't do it. But in a dream world where didn't displace animals or anything like that, Montana or Wyoming would be pretty dope. I can picture Montana now with a track in it, and that would be just so absolutely wild. Oh, the sunsets? It would have to be an evening into the sunset. That'd be gorgeous. And also imagine all the content we would get, like Coda on steroids. Well, if you do Montana correctly, you can get overlooking like the mountains with the beautiful scenery. I mean, amazing. You guys are talking about Montana, but it reminded me of South Dakota. I think it's the correct state that the Badlands are in. I went there one time and went through the Badlands and it's a lot of like sort beautiful landscape. And like as soon as like Leanne mentioned, like not having to displace animals or anything in the perfect world where that didn't happen. It'll be really cool to see some F1 cars drive through that landscape with the views in the back, Mount Rushmore in the back somewhere in there. Total American. See, Melissa, you mentioned the Badlands and my head automatically went, oh my God, Formula One cars on the Bonneville Salt Flats would be absolutely bonkers. It would be probably really dangerous and not possible to do, I would just love to see that. I think that would be so cool. For people who don't know, they used to race cars on the Bonneville Salt Flats, and it's really different. It's a little dangerous because you're driving on salt, but it's really cool. It's beautiful, too. If you have not seen it, Google it. The photos are stunning. All right. And I think what would be fun here is if we all came together, PGP, and decided who had the best team or whose aspects could create the best team all together and create the Power Rangers of <laughs> Formula One teams. So let's have it, girls. I liked Amy's team, the buildup with having the reserve driver. However, me personally, I probably would keep my own two drivers. But Hannah having Susie as a team principal, I think that would be chef's kiss right there. You know, um, while personally, I would still choose my same team drivers, I did love the aspect that Chelsea brought with bringing the two Latinos together, similar with Melissa. Like, that was amazing. And I feel like that would be a great combo to see. And we've never seen that combo before. When it comes to dream principal, if I couldn't choose my own, I would still go with lovely Leanne. Because that was hilarious. And it would be different. It would either be successful or a real lesson to everybody. She's been watching Christian for years. She's silently preparing herself, guys. She knows. She is Ginger Spice. Spice up your freaking life, Hannah. <laughs> she could do it all. Okay. She could do it all. I am so sure they have family dinners. And she's like, no, listen to me. You need to do this at the next race. And he does. He's probably done some calls. And he's like, yeah, yeah, she called it. She said, you better call Danny back. She said, you better get Danny from McLaren. Her mom instincts were like, get him out of there right now. That's She's what happened. She's the secret service. Secret service all the way. Has to be. She's the intel. And then as far as like the dream track, you know, I'm a little torn on that. Because while I want the... France race to come back 
a Peru or a Chile race would be amazing as well because we've never had it before. And why not? Actually, you guys had an amazing idea while you were talking about America, like another circuit, which I know if there's any Europeans listening to this, they're already like, stop, no more. They don't want us to have any more circuits, but whatever. Do you guys remember in the movie Cars when like they're kind of going together and there's the waterfall and they have like this big canyon scene? I want us to create a circuit around there in like Arizona, like the Grand Canyon. Like, let's get a circuit in there. Is that safe? Probably not. Not at all. But if they learn how to drift like Doc did, they'll be fine. So Chelsea's Grand Canyon idea, waterfall, just made me think of something. How logistically this would be done, I truly don't know. The track that goes around Niagara Falls, both Canada and Buffalo side. Again, logistical nightmare. How badass would that be? That's like my second home. I love it there. A street circuit on steroids? (laughs) <laughs> no, it like literally be- the cross the crossover yeah. would be the crossover would be from Canada into the US. It'd be the Peace Bridge from Niagara, Canada to Niagara US. And then they yeah. take that down. It's a 20 minute drive, guys. In normal cars. Are you kidding me? Not like I do this all the time. <laughs> yeah. Having a track that ran through Niagara would just be chaos and I love it. But I do have to say I love Chelsea's full Latino team. I think it's fan freaking tastic. But I would still keep Toto as my team principal, personally. I was going to say Melissa's dual team principal thing. I want to see it. Because if you have two teams that both held long-standing champions, like, what can you do together? Like, is there any point for anyone else to race after that? Could you imagine how chaotic Toto and Christian would be working together? All I'm thinking about is that famous, like, drive to survive scene. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about. Change your fucking car. All, all I can see is that and then, like, them arguing. It's like, we can't change the car because it's the same damn car that we had. It, it would be so funny. Oh, no. It would be Michael's nightmare, guys. It'd be Michael's nightmare. It'd be hel- he would hilarious hate it. to see. Yeah. Why not? I feel like some of these like theories would be a logistical nightmare but i mean i would still love to see it all day every day and why not i'm a reality producer i'm here for the chaotic at all times i create it (laughs) yeah i I mean like chaos like i while i was coming up with my team and everything i was like do i go the chaos route do i go the realistic route what do i do would i love a bro sadie's back together sure would it be good? Probably not. But I mean, that's why I'm sticking with my two drivers, Max and Charles, but I'm taking Arthur as my reserve because that would just be cute, even if it would never happen because Charles said he does not want to race his brother in the same team. He doesn't have an opinion in my world right now. Well, we all know that Toto and Christian would fight like cats and dogs and would probably murder each other can you just imagine the complete and utter chaos that would happen if we got bro sadies back together i'm pretty sure that punches would be thrown hair would be pulled it would be an all-out cat fight i mean let's be honest it was a cat fight in 2016 i'm sorry I didn't do a reserve driver either. I just completely forgot about it while I was planning mine. But I just rounded up my team with another Hispanic. We're bringing in Pato. I'm taking him from I knew that's what you were going to say. I'm taking him. We're bringing him into Formula One. I don't know if he's ready. We're, We're bringing him in. He's ready in my fantasy world. And we're putting him in. That's it. Hispanic team out. As long as we also bring in his dog, Norby, I'm down. Norby for team mascot. Hands down that dog is the cutest thing and i love bringing pato up because that boy deserves it absolutely my team logo is gonna be my dog silhouette done it'll look too close to the greyhound thing but it's it's gonna be that this could be her head i already know my team we got roscoe the man the myth the legend Ooh, roscoe love him honestly Teams that have dogs as their mascots are the best teams. You know what I pick? I pick the horse that Danny Rick rode on in Austin as the team mascot because 
that's amazing. And since I already have Danny as my reserve driver, he can just ride it on it. That poor horse, should, he should not been on top of that horse. I know weight limits. Well, valid. The horse was a little too small for him. It was more a pony. He needed an actual like six foot five hand horse. And as an avid yeah. horse rider in my previous years when I was younger, the man could learn a thing or two. But it would still be cool to have a horse as a mascot because who won it? Or you can get a miniature pony. Oh, what show had a miniature pony on it? Robin Big? Remember the Robin Big Pony? <laughs> Wait, is it Ferrari a horse? That's more aggressive horse. We're talking mini pin. We're talking about mini ponies. <laughs> <laughs> Even though some of them are aggressive. They're lovable. Especially They're the, the corgi of the horses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a little Shetland cow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, you mean like going a little Highland a cow? Now. Yes. Um, Highland cow. Yes. Oh yeah. God, yes. Speaking of horses, it just brought up that I was watching the Preakness yesterday for who, like the people that are not familiar. It's like part of like the three big horse races. First is like the Kentucky Derby, then Preakness, and then it's the other one. I only remember Preakness because it's like, Triple there crown, go, baby. Leanne. Preakness. <laughs> triple Leanne crown. And I know where it is. It's in Baltimore. And I was watching it just because it was something on TV. And the whole time, like when the horses were racing, all I kept thinking it was just like F1 commentary, but I feel so bad for those horses. <laughs> I feel really, really bad just because like they're running and all, but that's probably like their life. But it just brought like when everyone was talking about Danny not knowing how to ride a horse, I'm like, oh, yeah, those horses from yesterday. Fun fact, this can be deleted if you want it to, Craig. I uh, tried to fight a guy when I was 12 years old at a horse race because I didn't like how he was treating the horse and I got up on the fence and started screaming at him. <laughs> and my mom was like, oh, you can keep going, but I might need to take you away in a second. <laughs> I was like, who do you think Leanne, you are? I you. Oh, I got and angry. That is our host, Leanne. Leanne is <laughs> an icon. <laughs> a plus plus that concludes our episode this week we're doing a team of the week and i don't really think we settled on a winner so we're all just team of the week the pgp gals are the team of the week so i think we should make a trophy for ourselves and put it on the instagram okay oh champagne pop oh yeah <laughs> i saw that all right Champagne showers for the PGP ladies this week. We are the team of the week. Thank you all for being here. We hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as we did. I think I can speak for all of us when I say this was a really fun time to like daydream and chat back and forth about our favorite motorsport. As always, be sure to follow and share all of our social medias with your friends and family and some strangers. Everything is Paddock Girls Podcast, except for Twitter. That lovely lady is Paddock Girls Pod. Be on the lookout for our YouTube channel. Other than posting our full episodes, there could be some content coming soon. So just check back. Thanks for joining us in the paddock. See you at the next race. Bye, Craig. Adios, Craig. Bye, Craig. Bye, Craig. Bye, Craig. See you, Craig.